So welcome back to the plugins learning path. In the last um, learning path lesson, we explored how to make a plugin package using the control panel. And then we looked at the two different packages that it created for us um, for iOS and for Android. And so this lesson, we're going to open up our Xcode project and we're going to show you how to create some functionality in iOS. So I'm going to drag the Xcode project icon over the Xcode application in my dock and launch this in Xcode. And the next thing that we're going to do, like we always have to do, is add our plugins to the project. So we'll drag the plugins to the project. And then I've got a couple of pieces of art here in the art folder that I want to add to our project. Bug and Splat. So we'll add those. And what we're going to do is we're not going to change any source code. We're just going to run this in the simulator and I'll show you what we get. Now because we used a custom plugin and we connected that to our menu, you may have remembered that on the, in the control panel. Our menu's only got one item on it. You saw the splash screen. And when we tap this play game men menu row, this is the plugin that's loading. We gave it a title of play game in the control panel. But since we haven't changed any of the source code, we just, in essence, have an empty screen. And believe it or not, there are a lot of uses for an empty screen, um, but we're not going to get into those right now. We're just going to talk about how this is happening, and then we're going to make some changes and make it a little bit of fun, add a little bit of life to it. So before we add any um, code to this, I want to explore the class files one more time, and I know we did it in the last video, but these are all the class files and all the uh, miscellaneous parts and components that are necessary to run each plugin. And you'll see here the bug tap screen folder with the bug tap screen .h file and .m file are created for us. So when we tap this menu row in this um, on our home screen on our menu, what's happening is we're loading this class. And a lot of this code is written for you already, but it's only the basic amount of code um, necessary to make it load. So this is what we're going to customize. So what we're going to do is I'm going to open up a text file that I created. I actually wrote this code earlier. It took me about an hour, so I didn't want to bore you with an hour-long video. And we'll just paste it into, into this class file and I'll explain what I'm doing. That'll be much faster than watching me type. So this is my little cheat sheet that I wrote. And you're going to get a copy of this. You can download a copy of this when you're done. and I, and I I'll encourage you to um, just do this step by step so that you can um, try to recreate what we did. I think it'll make it a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up, I'm going to make Xcode a little bit bigger so we can um, get a little more screen space here. And I'm going to go to the .h file. And I'm going to go to my little cheat sheet here. And I'm just going to skip these instructions because they're going to tell you to do what I'm doing right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these properties. We're going to create a few properties for our bug tapping game. We've got a couple of images and we've got a start button and then we have a, a timer to operate our game loop. Our game loop. And we've got some destinations, um, X values and Y values. These properties are going to help us move a bug around the screen while we try to tap it with our, with our finger or our mouse in this case. So we get our, all of our properties declared in the, in the dot H. And then the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to paste in some prop, um, some methods, excuse me. And these are the methods that we need um, to operate our game. So in Objective C, what we're doing in our .h file, which is also called um, the interface, is we're explaining to the compiler what our .m file is going to do. So when we do something like create a method here called start game or end game or move bug. When we paste this method in the .h file, or just type it in ourselves, um, this is known as a method stub. When we paste this method in the .h file, we're telling the compiler in Xcode to look for a method called start game in the .m file. So we're going to have five methods in our game, so I'm describing them in the, in the interface in .h, and I'm going to save this. And now in the .m file, we're going to go ahead and implement these methods. So this is our tap screen class, our bug tap screen class. That's the custom plugin that we made. And in the view did load method, we're going to add this code here and I'll explain it to you. 
We'll go in here to the view did load method and we'll paste what I wrote. And basically what we've done is we've added a UI image view that's we called image view bug and it's holding our bug graphic and then we added it as a sub view to the to the screen and we set its frame to position it on the screen zero pixels from the left zero pixels from the top it's 50 pixels wide and it's 50 pixels high this is our bug that we're going to try to tap on in our game and then we set it to hidden so it doesn't show up until after we hit the start button then we basically just did the exact same thing right here with another image called splat and the splat image is the same size as the bug image and we're going to show it once you catch up with the bug and then we added a start button and then we initialized some variables to um, 0 and 50 for speed and you can adjust this speed if you'd like so we're doing all of our page setup in the view did load method so after the view loads we have the view will appear method so the view will appear method um, isn't going to change because we haven't changed anything. For, we don't need to manipulate anything in the view will appear method that was already written for us um, by the plugin generator. But we did add a couple of new methods. We added our start game method. So I'll paste that in. And remember, we described our start game method in the .h file. So here's the actual implementation. And then our end game method. I'll copy that and paste it in. And the descriptions, the, the names of the methods um, help you understand what they do. Here's the move bug method. And then here is a method called intersecting that I wrote. And what this is doing is it's calculating um, where we tapped. Um, it's not actually calculating where we tapped. It's calculating if where we tapped is where our bug is on the screen. So the touches began method, which is a built-in iOS method, captures the location of our finger tap or on the simulator our mouse tap and then the intersecting method that I wrote determines if our tap was over the button I mean over the image and then we need to release these these properties these objects that we made and releasing these objects um, helps iOS save uh, memory and conserve memory there's a lot of different ways to manage memory in iOS and this lesson is certainly not about that so to recap, all I did is I pasted in some properties and some method declarations in .h. And then in the .m file, we pasted in the methods themselves from our cheat sheet. And now what I'm going to do is hit the Run button again and recompile this. And it's not going to look any different at first. The menu is going to load. And now when we hit Play Game, here's our Start button. So let's go back up to the View Did Load right here the view did load method and this is where the start button was added we also added the images to the screen but remember we set them to hidden so you can't see them now when the start button is tapped you can see here in the code that we added a selector a selector in iOS is how you tell something um, what to do so we've said hey start button when somebody taps on you or touches you run a method called start game so our start game method is down here and it's going to show the bug and the bugs going to start moving around and it's just going to randomly move around until we tap on it and when we tap on it let's see if I can get this thing it's not as easy as it looks aha we turn the bug image into a splat and then we change the start button to play again so in a real game we would have things like a timer or a score um, we would probably have a few choices in our menu over here. We might have splat the bug or catch the bug. And after all, we called our application bug games. Um, but this, this tutorial, this lesson is um, supposed to show you um, how actually how easy it is to customize these plugins. And I know you're not a programmer um, and I know this looks very, very daunting. But believe me, if you stick with this a little bit, it's not that big of a deal. And of course you have resources, you have Google and you have the BuzzTouch forums and you have a lot of different places where you can learn how to, how to put these controls on the screen and the onload method or the viewDidLoad method and then create your own little methods 
um, when people interact with your your plugins, and you're really going to um, you're really going to be able to push the limits of your application, um, creating possibilities if you just start to experiment with some of this stuff and don't be too intimidated. So that's the iOS um, plugin example for our um, simple little bug splat game. It's actually kind of cute. I'm not very good at it. Let's see, I missed it again. What the heck? Ah, there we go. I got it. So until next time, happy app building.